In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to mod an NES Classic, SNES Classic, or Genesis Classic in 2021. It's been a few years since the rise of these classic consoles. While they were popular upon release, that's not to say that they were actually loaded with the best games. That's where modding comes into play, and now it's easier than ever. The main work is in a program called HackG2. Let's jump over the PC and get started. All right, so here we are on our PC. I'll actually have a link to the GitHub for this, so don't even worry about that. So we're downloading HackG2. So when you get here, uh, right now we're on version 3.8.0. So you'll go ahead and just scroll down here. This is all just the information on it. And we're gonna go ahead and download the release zip here. So we'll click on that and it'll automatically download. All right, so once it's done, we'll go ahead and just click right out of this. And I actually have a download folder. We have it right here. We're gonna go ahead and right click it and we're gonna do extract files. Once it's all done, we got this file folder here. We'll go ahead and open it up and we're gonna just hit the executable. This is gonna open up the program for the first time. And so today we're gonna to be doing the NES Classic. The Sega Genesis, the SNES Classics, they're exactly the same. You're gonna run through the same procedure. The main difference is gonna be your ROMs that you're gonna be loading onto them. All right, so now we're all set up here. We're just gonna hit okay. And it's gonna prompt us. We're gonna say allow access. You might not have this if you don't have uh, Windows Defender. And then this is just kinda of goes through all this. We'll hit okay. So uh, we'll take a little short tour around here. So these are the original games that came on our NES. Uh, once we add some, you'll see that it'll shift over and then you'll actually see the new ones that we've installed. Um, you can take off any one by clicking any of the uh, check marks here. So if you don't want a certain game on there, you're more than welcome to. Um, I personally just leave them all on here. Um, if you're in fact going to uh, do a different console, you can come up to here. Uh, today we're actually doing the NES, so I'll leave it, but you can do Super NES. Make sure you hit the right region too. So Super NES would be USA, and then the, um, the Genesis USA would be the Sega Genesis if that's the one you're doing. Um, as for that, um, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna flash a custom kernel so we can uh, have control over it. Uh, so we're gonna click kernel and then install and repair. And we're just gonna hit yes, we do wanna flash a custom kernel. It's actually gonna walk us through the procedure right here. Um, so you can take a minute and, and work through it. Um, I'll show you exactly how we're gonna do it though. So we'll come to the NES here. We're gonna hit the power button in so that it's automatically on. We're gonna hold down the reset button. And then we're gonna plug in our USB connection in the back. We're gonna hold that reset button until we get a prompt. And there it goes and we'll release it. So it's actually gonna work through the kernel here and once it's done, it'll have us click through and say, okay. While we're waiting for this, uh, so it's really up to you to get the uh, ROMs that you wanna add on to here. Um, I'm not gonna go over exactly how to get your ROMs, um, whether you ripped them or if you're grabbing them off the web. I've actually got a folder already set up here on my desktop, which has my NES uh, ROMs that I'm gonna add, be adding to it. And this one's actually a sample one, so I'm not adding a ton of ROMs to it. Usually I stick about, about 80 in total. That's including the games that are already preloaded. So 80 in total is what I usually do. All right, it's just rebooting.
All right, and we're gonna click through here. Say okay. So in previous versions, you actually had to uh, do a backup of your original kernel. Um, you, in the later releases, you actually don't have to do that anymore. So you used to have to, when you first did this, you had to back up your first original firmware and then flash your uh, custom firmware just because if things went wrong, then you could go back to it. But they actually have a procedure where it actually backs it up already or they have a, the backup. So you don't even have to worry about that, which is really nice. Um, so once we're done here, um, we, we can we can do a couple things. If you've ever messed with any of the uh, modded classic consoles that aren't modified or you don't have any changes, it actually boots into a really ugly, uh, or what I think is a really ugly boot splash. So honestly, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change that. So I'm gonna uh, just disable the boot splash from coming up. So this will actually allow it to, when you boot up the system, it'll just go straight into the, uh, the games uh, folder. The other thing I'm gonna do is more cosmetic as well, is I'm actually gonna hit structure here. And you can uh, you can choose whatever one you'd like. I'll just kind of show you exactly what I do. Um, but you can choose all the ways that your, your games are kind of split up throughout the menu system here. Uh, for me, I really, really prefer it to look really clean. So I actually do pages, just split games equally. Um, it, it tends to look a lot better. If you're doing the entire library of NES, you're probably gonna want folders and that kind of stuff. But for me, it just looks a little ugly and you can't remember which folder's which and you just kind of jumping in and out trying to figure out which game you wanna play. Um, so I choose pages split games equally. And then I also change something uh, here, which is the maximum games, games per page. So when I'm usually modding these systems, I actually put about 80 games on. I think it's 78 in total. Uh, including all the games. So I actually, when I'm doing it that way, I actually click on 80. I know it says not recommended. It, it can cause glitches and that kind of thing, um, but that's just something I like. So that way, when you open up the, the main system menu, you can actually see all the games all at once rather than having to jump into separate folders. Uh, so for this one, I'm not adding too many games. I'm actually gonna split it up into, let's see, I'll go, I'll go 60. So we'll click that there. Now, we're all ready to add some new games to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click add more games and it's gonna bring up our system here. We're gonna hit desktop. I'm just gonna navigate to my NES folder and I'm gonna click on the first one. Let's just add one here. Let's just do Goonies, how about that? Click on this one. And it's gonna process and add into our library. So, on the left hand side here, you have all your original games and then it's gonna put all your new ones that you're gonna to add to it at the very top. So this is Goonies 2 here. It looks like it grabbed the uh, box art already so we don't even have to worry about that. If you end up not having the box art, if it doesn't come through, you can also do it manually by clicking on it. You're gonna right click and then you're gonna add, uh, excuse me, you're gonna click on download box uh, for selected games. And you can do a big batch of them. So let's say we're adding in 15 games. You can actually just highlight all of them, right click, and then do the same thing. Um, but it looks like it grabbed it. It's been really, 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 really good at grabbing the box art. Uh, the early releases, it didn't do it. So then you'd have to go and manually find it. So that's all we'll do here. All we're going to do now to synchronize it is just hit the synchronize button. So we'll click it. It's going to boot real quick. It's going to add in that Goonies. Once it's done, we'll just hit okay. And let's go ahead and connect this up to our uh, monitor and just uh, test everything out. All right, we'll go ahead and power on here. All right, and it loaded up and I can see Goonies already there. We'll kind of take a look around. So this is what I mean by splitting it up. So if we leave them all on a page, we'll actually see all these little box arts down at the bottom. It'll display all 80 if we click on that 80 uh, version of it. Um, so that's how I like to do it. If you don't do it that way, it'll add folders down to the bottom that you'll click on and then you'll move further and further into it. It just gets really confusing after a while if you have a ton of games, so. Uh, anyway, so a couple different things. We can change the display look uh, to whatever you want. And then you can also uh, you can also choose on how these box arts are displayed. So if you hit the select button, you can go, uh, this is by two player games, by recently played, by times played, by release date, by publisher, and then by title. By title is usually how I keep it as well. I just do it alphabetically. So yeah, that's uh, 
pretty much all there is to it. Let's go ahead and just jump into Goonies and just make sure everything's running right. And it loads perfectly fine. Man, this game reminds me of my, my childhood, like, big time. And that's all there is to modding these systems. While the program makes it easier than ever, it still leaves some work up to you. That's finding the appropriate ROMs legally, as well as finding box art if it's missing. If you're looking to mod your classic console in 2021, I hope this helped. And if you're looking to mod any other console, you can find me at dvgamerepair.com or at my office at Raven Retro Games in Colorado Springs. Keep checking back on my channel for more mods and repairs, and remember, a like and subscribe are always appreciated. Thank you again for your support, and we will catch you guys later.